Right then, MGF of a geometric distribution. This is used when we're interested in number of trials until we get the first success. Now, and the uh, probability, density, probability mass function that I've given you on the previous page is just uh, one expression of the geometric. You'll see that there's another one. It depends on how you count the uh, defined x number of trials to your first success or uh, number of failures until your first success. Okay, so I'm defining x to be the number of trials to the first success. Whichever way you get, reach the same answer. So my random variable is x, which is geometric. Geometric is discrete. In this case, taking values integer values 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. So this expectation we have to sum, not integrate, e to the tx, and times, and now write down the p probability mass function of the uh, geometric, or well, minus p, that's the probability of a success, x to the minus 1, x is the number of goes until your first, until your first success, P. And they were summing of x from 1 to possibly infinity. Okay. Now, what do I do? Um, I look at this thing and I say, I'm, I'm doing, dealing with infinite sum here. Hmm. And there's some things here which do not depend on x, so we can take it out of the summation sign because it's a common factor. That depends on x. This depends on x. P does not depend on x. It's a common factor then, if I was to expand this sum. So P comes out. Now at this stage, I have to think. Right. We've got an infinite sum. What do I know about infinite sums? Don't panic. Don't look in the answer book if there is one. Um, okay. Well, it would be good if we can write this as one blob here with the same power. That's the power of x minus 1. That's the power of x. So. How shall I write this? I kind of write it in detail. Okay. What I'm thinking along these lines is because I know something about infinite s results of infinite sums, because you know, say something like this: one plus, uh, how in fact zero? That's one plus uh, a plus. A squared. We kind of uh, know something about what this formula comes to, you know, when there's a restriction given on A. So that's kind of what I'm thinking of. And that's why I want the same power, because that's A to the power, right? So I want to group these two together. So I want to do that E to the Tx. Well, if I uh, E to the t e to the minus t this, this thing obviously comes to us at 1 now this helps because now I want to grab this term and take it out p e to the t and that gives me the same power because e to the tx times minus t is t x to the minus 1 times 1 to the minus px to the minus 1. So these two guys are the same power now, so I just write e to the t. I'm giving you more steps than needed, so that's why this is looking really long, but you didn't have to write all these steps out. Okay, and then you have uh, e to the t, 1 minus p, and that whole thing, which I kind of think, let's call that whole blob a, is x to the minus 1. Okay, and we know something about this because if 
absolute value of a is less than 1, and we know that this comes to 1 over minus a. This is a geometric progression. And uh, if it was any hint at all, this <laughs> this x here is a geometric distribution, isn't it? Geometric distribution, geometric progression. So this has got this has got something to do with it. That's why it's called geometric progression, geometric um, distribution. Right. Well, so if this guy here is less than one in absolute value, we know we're going to be able to do such an expansion. Yeah. That this sum starts from zero to is, and this one starts at one doesn't mean a thing because let's just rewrite this p e to the t. I'm just write start writing the first few sums here. Well, an x is one. That's one to the power. That's pass, that's something to the power of one minus one, which is one. Uh, okay, and that that deals with that. Uh, just to kind of, it's good practice because we don't want to keep writing the same thing out over and long things over and over again because that kind of increases the chance of making errors. I just call this theta, that block there. Um, so we have one, and then plus theta squared, uh, square, theta, sorry, because when x is two, that's going to be power of one, two minus one is one, so that's going to be theta plus and then three, three minus two is two, and then theta squared, and so on. That's a geometric progression. If the absolute value of theta is less than one. So if it is less than one, we could say it's e to the t over one minus theta straight away. So if theta absolute value is less than one. And that would be our answer. That would be that MGF. And we'd be done. But let's just kind of explain, because we don't, you know, theta, we've, we've just kind of called it theta. Uh, what we call theta, we've called this guy theta. So what this is, is equal to e to the pt, 1 minus, instead of writing 1 minus p, because that's, if p is not probability of success, 1 minus p is probability of failure, let's just call it q, like I did on the other on the front of the page, and then we have here e to the t. Well, let's just explain why q is equal to one minus p. Right, that's not that's this is like common notation, and that's it. So long as this holds under the condition, to say theta is less than one, just substitute that in. Is to say now, do we know the absolute sign is not? We don't because to say that theta is less than 1. Or, look at this theta. e to the t, e to the t, where the t is the negative or positive number, e to the power of that number would be positive, because e to the power of anything is ne positive, right? Probability is between 0 and 1, so obviously that's not going to be negative, so you product of two things which are not going to be negative, so that's the same as saying without the absolute sign. So we can put that straight in, e to the t 1 minus p less than 1, since we've just said already that theta cannot be negative. And we're going to want to rearrange to get condition for t, because uh, t is the, m, cause the MGF is a function of t, you see, so we need to get the expression, and we need a condition on t, not the p, anything else. p we know is already between 0 and 1 anyway, so it doesn't, wouldn't make sense. All right, now, I can continue more one way here. Um, I can just divide both sides by 1 minus p. Same as that, because I don't like writing fractions. Uh, to get this t, I can take logs of this guy. So if I take log of this, and take logs of this, I have to consider uh, consider e to the t here, as I said, can not be negative. Well, why I have to cons what, what I'm saying now is, because we're dealing with inequality, you know that if I multiply through by a positive, that doesn't change the sign of the inequality, but if I multiply through by a negative, it does, okay? Uh, anyway, 
uh, if I take so if I take the log of this guy here, I'm going to t. And this is then I take the log of this guy, one minus p minus one, and the log of this guy here can't be negative, right? And that's what um because p is between zero and one. So, so just think about the kind of cases p approaches zero. Uh, what does one over one minus p tend to? Is it tend to zero? And then one over one minus p tends to a pro one, yeah, from from above. So it's not going to equal to one exactly. Only if p is exactly equal to zero, and then log of that thing will be equal to zero. Okay. Um, so we're fine. So here we could stop there, we could just take that minus 1 down, log of 1 minus p, and that's the condition. Next let's look at the, um, let's use the MGF to get the first moment, the mean of x.